Welcome to the studio, it's Froyle here. I'm so glad you've joined me. We're in week eight of 100 days of collage and our theme is travel. Today I'm taking you to the mysterious Stonehenge. <laughs> and we're going to be creating fabulous jelly prints using texture plates and then putting a collage together of our glorious prints. I hope you're going to join me. Visiting Stonehenge was definitely a bucket list experience. It was somewhere that I wanted to go and on the glorious trip that I did recently with my beautiful little treasure, we had one day to visit this magnificent place. Today visitors experience Stonehenge as a wonder of ancient achievement and enduring symbol of mystery. But Stonehenge was built as a temple, a place of ceremony, of burial and of celebration. The first Stonehenge was simple. It was just a circular ditch and bank, perhaps a few small upright timber posts or stones and was constructed about 5,000 years ago in the period of prehistory or the new Stone Age. By about 2500 BC, more and much larger stones had been brought to the site. Huge Sarsden stones from North Wiltshire and smaller blue stones from West Wales. This marked the period of over 800 years of construction and alteration stretching into the period known as the Bronze Age when the first metal tools and weapons were made. By this time Stonehenge was the greatest temple in Britain. Its banks, ditches and standing stones arranged in sophisticated alignments to mark the passage of sun and the changing seasons. But Stonehenge was just one part of a remarkable ancient landscape. Hundreds of burial mounds clustered on the surrounding hilltops while smaller temples and other ceremonial sites were built nearby. Stonehenge and these other ancient structures from an archaeological landscape so rich that it is classified as a World Heritage Site. So I think we need to create something inspired by the fabulous stone circle and I have this glorious texture plate. Now I made this texture plate from this stencil from PM Artist Studio. It's the Geo Poly or Poly Geo or something. <laughs> I'll put the link in the description under the video. It's a great stencil. I used molding paste and put it onto a piece of matte board just so it's a nice stiff base because then this creates my texture plate. So easy, so simple, and it creates the most fabulous results. So let's create some fabulous jelly prints with this glorious texture and then we'll put a collage together. I really hate to mark up my beautiful texture plate. It's so nice and clean. <laughs> Look at that fabulous mark, so easy. Just going to print this straight onto some rice paper and then we'll probably get caught up in a bit of a printing frenzy and create a whole heap of beautiful papers. Look at that, that is definitely the right texture for what I'm wanting to create. Righto, let's print a whole heap and then see where we're at. It was really quite humbling, the whole experience to be walking around this place with these beautiful stones, listening to the tour guide talk about thousands and thousands of years ago, what the people did there, how they lived, and why the stones were created. Of course, they don't know exactly, they can only surmise with the archaeological digs, but they do know a fair amount. It's quite fascinating, really, as I think about what will the place where I live be in a thousand years, two thousand years? Will anything be left? Will people be wandering around thinking about what I was doing? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> But I really enjoyed what the tour guide had to say. I loved how he told the story of the different people groups that had used the space and what they'd used it for and how it developed over hundreds and hundreds of years. Now you can use your texture plate 
like a big stamp pad. <laughs> I know it can get a little smudgy, but you don't want to worry about that because you can create wonderful layers on your paper and it makes for interesting prints. So I like to put the texture plate on, yay, pick it up and move it around and it creates an overall background pattern and a texture on the plate. It's a whole lot of fun. It's really, really interesting, the marks that you get. Fabulous for creating background papers or just putting something on a piece of paper that you want to add another layer to, to build up the texture. Fabulous way to start your printmaking to create lots of layers. I also like to add multiple layers to the same print to build up that texture. And it's so easy. Look at that. It's just, <laughs> it's just so easy. There's a print already taken with the same texture plate. And I'm just putting another layer on it to build up that texture and that color and create really interesting patterns. Absolutely love it. There's so much you can do with this very, very simple idea. Of course, you don't have to just stick to the gel plate. You can put the texture plate through your stencil straight onto your paper. Listen to that. <laughs> this one is so grainy and so textured. I absolutely love it. This one is a coarse texture medium. Liquitex Basics Acrylics. I'll put all the links in the description under the video if you want to find it. It's quite thick. It sounds like it has sand in it. That is a whole lot of fun. And you can put it just straight through your stencil onto your paper to create some fabulous texture. Easy peasy lemon squeezy look at that <laughs> now you will have to wash your stencil straight away otherwise it could get clogged up with the texture paste and you have to wait for the texture paste to dry be before we can add some more paints or inks or something else to the fabulous design and once it is dry we can add whatever we want to the paper to color the fabulous design. Maybe some fluid paint, maybe some spray inks, maybe some full body, maybe all of the above. <laughs> it's quite endless what we can do. And look how glorious this texture is from putting the paste through the stencil. I just love it. This one I've put onto watercolor paper and it's a little stronger and thicker so it'll handle whatever I want to throw at it. And a few layers of some paint and sprays. And voila, we have a beautiful piece of paper ready for our collage. Then we just have to decide which one we actually want to use. Gotta love just a little bit of bling. Right, we'll let that dry and then see how it looks. This texture plate prints a little smudgy, so I'm going to add some black tie stencil butter. What I love about stencil butter is that it's already thick. Yay! I don't have to mix it with any of the pastes or gels. Straight out of the tub, straight onto my stencil and it's going to be fabulous. So easy peasy. Oh yes, that looks fabulous. If I put it on the side here, I reckon, I reckon I could probably put this section on here without causing too much damage. Cause you know, you wouldn't want me to have to actually wait. Jeez. Ha, yes, this is going to work. Let's turn it up the other way and go on this side. And then, oh, I'm liking this piece of paper. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to use this in the collage. 
So yes, I will have to wait for it to dry to do that. But you know, I could just carry on printing while I'm waiting. Ta-da! That looks fabulous. So here's some more prints that I did using the texture plate as background. Also putting some acrylic through the stencil on top and using the coarse texture paste as well. Then of course I had to throw some inks on them, a little bit of paint and voila, we have a whole collection. Now we just have to choose what we're gonna use for the collage. So I'm going to use my art journal today for putting the collage is in of my fabulous Stonehenge inspired creations. Yay. Oh, do you want to see last week's collages? Of course you do. <laughs> so these are the ones that I did inspired by my Van Gogh prints that I took last Sunday. Aren't they glorious? I think I like this one the best. Although my mum likes this one the best, it's probably the glamour. Anyway, if you want to join me in making these collages, you'll find this video on Patreon. Come and join me on Patreon. We have a lot of fun. I'm creating the videos still in the 100 days of collage theme. We also have a live chat every second Friday and we're starting a new project. So you wanna jump in, hang out with us live in the studio, face to face, and we create something on the spot then. You can also see these fabulous videos. They'll be in the library. So come and join me on Patreon. So which of these fabulous prints are we going to use in our collage? I've got quite a few different colors. I'm loving the texture. It's going to work really well. We definitely have to cut a circle. We need a stone circle for sure. So I might cut a circle out of this one. I like the drama and the contrast. And then I might use this one for background because it's a lot softer in color. But this one's got some really nice texture. I'm loving it. See, look, the Sarsden stones. <laughs> they're standing upright. And there, there's the lintel on top. So I definitely have to decide now which of the prints we're going to use. That one's pretty nice too with the gold. Oh man, this one looks really interesting too with this color and texture on it. Oh, such decisions. So we definitely need a stone circle and I'm thinking this one, I'm going to cut a circle with one of my secret circle makers <laughs> out of there, I'm thinking. So I'll probably use the back, cut it on the back. Now this secret circle maker is actually a template from my mum's favorite cereal bowl. It just happened to be the exact size I needed and because I kept going and pinching it from the kitchen, I ended up making a template so she wouldn't get annoyed when a bowl was missing. Um, it's a good size. I've used it all the time. Clearly, I've jelly print with it. And I've got another episode where I've used it a lot. I'll put a link on that if you like. It's a lot of fun. Now, in case you were wondering, no, you can't touch the stones. <laughs> And they're not going to transport you anywhere. That's pretty cool off cuts. Yes. The different people groups that were using the stones eventually faded away and it became abandoned. I know, right? Can you believe it? In fact, because of the weather and the age, some of the stones started to fall over. Some of the people in the area dragged them away and used them for other things, even homes, constructions. In fact, the tour guy said that Sting has one of the original stones in his house. I know, right? <laughs> I think that's pretty amazing. So it was in the early 20th century that somebody decided they need to preserve the area. People were wandering in, looking around, touching the stones, running a muck, carving their names on them like, hello, how rude is that? They were scratching off bits souvenirs to take home so yes it then became a world heritage site so it could be protected which is a really good idea really so more generations of people can have a look wander around and think about the amazing history 
The information center actually is quite amazing. It was really worth looking at. It had a lot of different displays about the people and the history and how it developed. I think it was so incredibly fascinating that it developed over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. I think that was pretty cool. Look at the shapes in this stencil. They're perfect for what I wanted. The uprights and the lintels of the stone circle. I'm loving it. Right, so that looks circular enough. It's not perfect, but I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm loving the color of this one. I also absolutely love this one with the fabulous print of the texture plate straight onto the rice paper. So I think I'll just glue the backgrounds down and then decide what I'm going to add with this circular piece and what circular shape am I going to add on that page. Oh man, yes, I'm going to have a rummage through my scrap box. Right, so the backgrounds are down, the beautiful prints are on the pages, everything is wet, but we're okay. I had a little rummage in my scrap bag and pulled out some possibilities. This beautiful stone circle is going there on this print. And what else are we going to add? I think I'd like to put some of the beautiful Agura lace underneath it. Now this goes very transparent. You only just see the fibers, which I think is gonna look really good. I'm liking that plan. I could put it under there like that. I've got some bits and pieces from my scrap bag. So I might put those bits like that. Yes, yes, I'm liking that. That looks good. That looks good. And like I said, it will dissolve quite transparent. And then you just see the glorious fibers. I'm loving this color. I've got a gap down the bottom. So we need to add something there. I could use some of this is my fabulous painted tissue, white tissue that I put onto plastic and drown with empty bottles of inks and paints and whatever I have. I love it. It's one of my favorite ways of creating collage paper. I could put some of that along the edge there, but mm, I don't know, man. I'm not feeling it. I know. What's another option? I'm liking that option. What about some of this Momogami paper? This is pretty nice. Yeah, I think I'm feeling this more. Righto, let's put some of that on the edge down the bottom here. That one, also with the gold. Yes, going with the gold for sure, for sure. We're going with the little goldy section. I think that'll be good. That'll work just fine. And then once that dries, we can see if we want to add anything else to the page, depending on how it looks once that Agura laced does its thing and dries. So that's what we'll do there. This side, oh, we've got a little bit left. What will we use for the circle? I could cut another circle because I've got so many fabulous prints, but that would just look too same, same, and we can't do that. That piece kind of works. We, maybe we could do something with this piece. Maybe that little piece of leftover. Maybe, baby, maybe. Um, circle, yes, circle is coming. <laughs> What about one of these handmade roses? That could work. Something like that. What do you think? I think that could work. It's quite simple, but I'm liking simple because I want this beautiful jelly print to come through. I don't want to obliterate it and it not be able to be seen. So that could work. We do have to put something down here because the page didn't reach. What about if we use the off cut from there, from that one? You know, you know? Yeah, I'm loving it. Righto, I'm doing that. I'm gonna stick all that down and then I'll show you how magnificent my, <laughs> my pages are going to look. So I ended up using sections of the same print because I just liked it. I was originally going to use a different piece of paper, but Things always change when I glue things on. I seem to always change my mind or move things around. I'm definitely an intuitive 
collage artist, I do, I'm not good for planning it all out and then actually making that exactly how I plan it. <laughs> I mean, it's probably easier to do it like that, but that doesn't work for me. I definitely make it up as I go along. And I put this piece of paper on first and then I loved it so much. I thought, you know, I'm just going to use the bits that I had left. They both come off that particular print. And I think it works really well with my background colour. I wanted to keep the whole composition simple because it was really all about the shapes of the upright beams and the lintels across the top. So I wanted to keep things simple and I wanted to have the circle because, you know, that stone circle is very famous. <laughs> so we had to have the circle element. Yes, we did. So I'm pretty happy with how the pages are looking. Of course, they'll be a little bit different as they dry because all of this Agoura lace will look a lot different and I'll show you when it's dry. And it's been really fun. I've enjoyed the whole process. You really have to make yourself some texture plates because it's easy, it's fun, it's quick and there's so many possibilities of the prints that you can create. You know what it's like jelly printing. Why print one when you can print 10, right? <laughs>for joining me today i hope you enjoyed this episode i really enjoyed creating these textures making the texture plates is so simple and so quick and easy with your jelly printing or just using the paste in a stencil it's so much fun and we created some fabulous collage inspired by the mystery of stonehenge <laughs> You can find out more information in the description under the video where I get the stencils from, the different pastes I've been using. And don't forget, you can find the link there to join me on Patreon. Come and have a look at the other videos. We also have a live chat every second Friday where we hang out in the studio making glorious art together and sharing a fabulous creative space. So if you want to hang out with me live in the studio, you'll find me on Patreon. So glad you joined me today. I'll see you next time in the studio.